Our guest today has been in show business ever since he was a bespectacled little tyke in the early 1960s. As Ernie Douglas on TV's popular family sitcom My Three Sons, Barry Livingston may have been the original poster child for what's now called geek culture. Bucking the trend so many child actors find themselves in, Barry has worked steadily in high-profile roles ever since. So there's plenty of new stuff as well as old stuff to talk about. Barry Livingston, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. You know, in reading up on you, and much of this is detailed in your memoir, The Importance of Being Ernie, would it be fair to say that you come from a showbiz family? Well, show business in a roundabout way. Uh, You know, we were never connected to film or TV, which is where I work. Uh, My parents owned uh, burlesque vaudeville theaters uh, that also showed movies. You know, it was they were movie theaters, but back in the day, they they uh, also had uh, live act. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, yes, uh, you know that that's not a real great like connection. Gee, you got a real inside track to getting in TV and film. That was pretty a pretty distant relative but still you know we were my parents were quite aware of you know in the entertainment industry that's for sure well you jumped into television pretty quickly but you started in film and the first film set that you had ever been on was the paul newman film from 1958 rally round the flag boys directed by the legendary leo mccary yeah right yeah <laughs> duck soup he directed marx brothers and I think he won an Oscar for some other project. But, yeah, he was a pretty well-renowned, uh, great director who fired me, <laughs> actually, for my <laughs> very first job because my eyes were crossing. I wasn't wearing glasses at the time. And, and for whatever reason, stress or it just was going to happen anyway, uh, my, my eyes started to turn in while we were shooting. And he uh, got kind of upset at me, thought I wasn't paying attention, and, when, when in fact, I was looking as hard as I could at where he wanted me to look. But to him, it looked like I was, you know, looking to the left or to the right because my eyes started to wander. You know, the bottom line was they went, well, he's supposed to be Paul Newman's son. And, uh, you know, that that looks weird. You know, it's like Marty Feldman. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, I was fired. I was let go from my very first film, R- Rally Around the Flag Boys with Paul Newman and Joe and Woodard. But I'm in the movie still, actually, because I'm upside down. In the very, very first scene you see him, Paul Newman's son, who I was playing, I'm, I apparently had swallowed some coins, and Joanne Woodward had me by my feet and was swinging me, uh-huh. you know, trying to, shaking me to get the coin out. That's actually me, because I'm upside down. They figured, well, for the rest of the movie, they'll recast it, and there'll be another kid, and he's standing upright looking normal. But they'll never notice that it, that it was a different kid that was hanging upside down. Now, may I say a few words about it? And I would assume that uh, Ozzie Nelson, uh, as a director, was maybe uh, a little more laid back than Leo McCary. Uh, yes, completely. He was very calm, uh, very methodical, very uh, you know, family guy with his kids and his wife. And everybody that worked for Ozzie was part of the big family of the Nelsons. And they were very generous and sweet people to work for. So... Yeah, I, I have the good fortune of becoming part of the, the Nelson family orbit. And, uh, yes, I, he gave me my first guest star billing. Um, I think I did 16 or 17 episodes of their show. And they were terrific. You know, everything, the nice thing that's ever been said about them is true. I would imagine you were a little too young to hang out with Ricky? Um, you know, I did my best to try to get <laughs> Rick's attention. Because <laughs> I, I was aware of who Rick was and how famous he was as a rock star and you know listening to the radio uh you know he was he was uh, what probably late teens early 20s maybe yeah, by the time yeah. i got there so you know yeah he was he was very very kind and a nice guy but had very little interest in hanging out with me <laughs> so um <laughs> it was all good you know uh, i saw them film some of the the sock hops where rick would sing you know hello mary lou or traveling man and ozzy would introduce that yeah, it'd be the premiere of the song. And the next day, you know, it'd shoot up the charts. And so Ozzy was one of the first guys who understood the power of TV to sell music. We're talking with actor Barry Livingston today on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop. And uh, we had mentioned your work on The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. You worked with another TV icon, Lucille Ball. Yeah, I worked with Lucy. Actually, I had a recurring role. Uh, I was 
playing Gail Gordon, who was Mr. Mooney. I was played his son, Arnold Mooney. And, uh, yes, that was just before I think I was under contract to, to work for my three sons. I wasn't quite a, a full-fledged son yet, but I was the friend next door, but I was under contract. So, you know, they, I had time. <clears throat> they let me out to go do an episode or two. Uh, when I finally became a son on the show, uh, you know, that ended. And uh, full time, I had to work on, uh, on on three sons. Didn't she give you a haircut on the show? She gave me a mohawk. Yes, that was a <laughs> gag, you know, because Mr. Mooney was her boss, and she gave Mr. Mooney's son a mohawk by accident. Hi, Arnold. Hello. I give lollipops. <laughs> So you then became a permanent fixture on My Three Sons, and of course, eventually one of the sons on My Three Sons. And you've mentioned this before, that while the turmoil of the 60s was happening simultaneously with the TV show, the show itself was kind of frozen in amber in a different <laughs> era, yeah. you know? Yeah, we were stuck in the, in the, the, the dinosaur days when everything got stuck, suddenly turned into the jet age. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, you know, on one level, it, as as a kid, as a teenager, uh, you know, in my own personal life, I saw things changing. I wanted to have my hair long and wear bell bottoms and paisley shirts, and you know, uh, the producers wanted to keep it much more uh, rooted in a you know midwestern clean cut crew cut. You know, um, mainly they didn't want to tag it to any particular generation, which in retrospect probably works. Uh, because, you know, it wasn't the Brady Bunch. We weren't running around, you know, in wild 70s outfits, and it sort of was just frozen in some time between the late 50s and the early 60s. By the late 60s, you know, that's when Nehru coats and everyone was wearing wild clothes and or no clothes at all. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, they, they, they kept it quite conservative, I'd say. But, you know, even as society changed, your look was still pretty au courant all through the 60s. You know, I was watching this uh, concert from The Doors from 1967, and when they cut to a shot of the crowd, it's not a crowd of, <laughs> of, of freaky long-haired people. It's a crowd yeah. of Ernie's. So it's That's like, funny. yeah, I mean, yeah. you represented what kids actually looked like. Well, I was a prototype nerd, and uh, <laughs> there was probably more nerds than people realized back in the early to mid '60s, and you know, television tried to depict kids, particularly in the late to the early '60s, that they were, you know, John Provost and Lassie, or even my brother Stan who played Chip. You know, they had blonde hair, blue eyes, teeth were perfect. Um, I was none of that. I was <laughs> I was buck teeth and and kind of a bowl cut and uh, short. Uh, you name it. You know, I uh, glasses. So, yeah, I kind of was a little bit ragged around the edges. But, you know, that, that resonated with uh, people who went, well, he looks like my kid. Ernie? I'd like, if I could, to ask you about the adults on the program, uh, beginning with Fred McMurray. Well, Fred was kind of a very private man. He was already a very, very large, you know, important Hollywood star, uh, you know, from movies. And, and so by the time coming to TV, it was it was quite unusual in that at that point, nineteen sixty, that a, a big movie star would, you know, deign to to go and do a television series. It was really kind of frowned upon. Uh, you know, you're taking a step down in your career. But, you know, he wanted to professionally he just went, I'm I, I don't want to uh travel anymore. He had adopted two girls. Um, you know, he just perhaps some of the subject matter he was not terribly fond of. Um, you know, there was a lot of much more racier subject matter. And anyway, he, he made the decision, I'm going to do TV. But, you know, again, he was just a very kind of conservative, very, very shy man on some levels, um, you know, but, but always very kind, very gracious, um, you know, never raised his voice, never saw him lose his temper, um, you know. But again, he was like the CEO of the company. We were all sort of the junior executives, uh, you know, and you, you knew who was really the boss, and, you know, it was all good. And William Demarest. Well, Demarest, uh, unlike William Frawley, who was the original nanny yeah. on the show, uh, Frawley, Frawley liked to drink. Frawley liked to swear. Frawley was a little bit unhinged and kind of fun to be around. Uh, and and Bill Demarest was too, but in a different way. He he, he was sober, 
and, and probably uh, that made him a little edgier, a little more crankier than Bill Frawley. Uh, but nonetheless, they were both kind of cut out of the same hard-boiled dudes that came out of the Depression and took no guff, and, you know, they were brawlers in their early days. So, you know, they... Uh, they, you know, they were both fun guys to be around, and they, you know, loved to talk about their past, and, you know, they were, they were a hoot. And then these two guys heard me. From 1971's L.A. Woman album, The Doors with The Changeling, an apropos song for our guest today, Barry Livingston, because as the years went on and Barry grew from a child into an adult, he continued to act and recently has appeared in very high-profile movies like The Social Network and Zodiac and Argo and high-profile TV shows like Judging Amy and uh, Will and Grace, uh, The West Wing, Mad Men. Yeah, you know, I mean, the NCIS, NCIS LA, yep. these are shows that are still pretty popular, and uh, I have a recurring role right now on Bosch, which is on Amazon Prime, and uh, yeah, I, I work at it, that's that's my job, is getting work, you know, the, that's the hard part of getting work in this town, is, is you know, keeping yourself relevant, I mean, working on the Orville, you know, I mean, shows that are seem to be quite popular now, it's been the... A blessing, really, that, that that casting and producers haven't pigeonholed me and typecast me, and, you know, and uh, or just gone. Well, he's had his day, and that's it. But it takes work, you know. And uh, but I, I, I've always found it kind of challenging and fun, and I like to do theater here uh, or wherever. So, you know, I mean, I, I take acting seriously. I mean, I don't take myself serious, <laughs> but I take my craft uh, very serious. You've also written yes. the book. It's been out for some time now, but it's still available, uh, The Importance of Being Ernie. Yes, it is. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. You can order it there. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was a great... I just finished uh, a very great movie called The Social Network. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'd already had recurring roles on Doogie Howser and a recurring role on Lois and Clark. Uh, you know, The New Adventures of Superman and... Simon and Simon and Heart to Heart, you know, I mean, I've worked in every every decade since the 60s, uh, but yeah, things, the momentum started to pick up a little bit more, so I wrote the importance of being Ernie uh, in the glow of having worked on a film that was, what, nominated for Best Picture and yeah. uh, a couple other, other films I had done recently before that, First Daughter with uh, Katie Holmes and Michael Keaton and... Uh, so, yeah, I was, I was feeling pretty full of myself. <laughs> and I, thought, <laughs> nah, I, know, I think I'll take a crack at this. Uh, I, it was probably because I was unemployed, too, though. That's, I must say that. <laughs> but anyway, one of those spans, I'd just done that, and I probably was unemployed for the next three months. So, um, yeah, it was it was just an exercise in, in let's see if I can do this. And lo and behold, uh, it came out, I thought, really well. And, and the publisher in New York liked it and, and decided to publish it. You know, Barry, this has been great talking to you. I've really enjoyed this conversation, and I, I want to encourage people to go to Amazon and uh, check out your book. Or, well, not check it out. It's not a library. Buy it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the importance of, of being Ernie. You mentioned watching Ricky Nelson perform uh, music when you were on Ozzy and Harriet and hearing those songs on the radio, and you're something of a music devotee yourself. I am, yeah, my... Wife and I have a little little uh, musical band called the Livingstons, and we uh, you know, we play locally. You know, I mean, we're we're open to we're open to traveling if someone were to offer <laughs> us a gig that made sense. But uh, we, you know, just for our own fun, and and uh, I do like to write songs. My wife does, so we, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a uh, a little bit more than a hobby. Occasionally, we play with my my son, who's got his own band now called Living More. So he's not as available to, to come out and kind of help us out. But, yeah, we, we used to play, you know, with some other guys in town. But it's pretty much been just Karen and I now. So, you know, that's all good. That's how we started. That's how we'll probably end. Well, part of the reason I asked that question is because I want to end this interview with a song that you wrote and you play guitar and you sing on, and it's called The Ballad of Fred McMurray. And I thought it was a really touching uh, piece of work there. Uh, Barry, thank you so much for being on the show. All the best to you and, of course, your lovely wife as well. Okay, great. Thanks for talking. (laughs) 